LeVar Arrington played for almost a decade, multiple time Pro Bowler, high school All American, college All American, top, what were you in number one? I what? don't know. You I were was top everything. Man. Fifth pick or something like that? Then I went pro. You know, it's interesting. We were talking about uh, Drew Brees. <laughs> Drew Brees is the NFL. Doubters, too small, not top recruit, second round. You are the rarity. Great high school, great college, top pick, great career. You're, you're the rare. But go back to your career. Yep. Half this league is undrafted. This league, football's hard, and it needs hard guys. Mm -hmm. Go back to your career. Look around. Did you ever play with a Drew Brees kind of personality that didn't have a huge high school career, didn't have a huge college, didn't go first, second round? Do you remember that? Yeah, the first, first name that comes to mind is Antonio Pierce. Uh, he was undrafted. Um, I recall going against him in college, and he, he had the big hits in the game. He made a lot of big plays with Lance Briggs and different guys on that same Arizona team. Um, and he came in undrafted. I couldn't believe he was undrafted when, when we got him. And, and you knew instantly. Well, I knew before we, we you know, yeah, when, when I saw him out there, because I didn't even know he was on our team until we got out in spring spring practices. And, and so... It's like, man, like we got this guy. And they couldn't justify playing him because that was the same time we had brought in Jeremiah Trotter and Jesse Armstead. And you were paying him money. So it could, they couldn't justify and playing him. So. And that's the way it, they do this in baseball all the time. If you get drafted in baseball, they'll, they'll call you up. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have a good spring and, you know, and the lower draft pick had a great spring. Same in the NFL. Mm -hmm. The undrafted guys, they want to be good, but not better than the draft picks. Yeah, you got to follow the money and you got to follow the optics. You know, a lot of times people are like, well, oh, I, I was all of those things. I actually was as good as advertised, but I also passed the eye test. Yeah. You know, there's a comfort, there's a comfort level in knowing that a guy is of the size and and skill sets that that I possess for for my position. Right. So you get a guy. I was breaking the mold. Now the mold is going back to more of a smaller type of linebacker. But when I was coming out to be six three, I ran a four four five. You were what everybody out. wanted. So I passed the eye test. Yeah. You know, you faced Breeze a couple times in college. Do you remember the early Drew Breeze in the NFL in San Diego? Do you remember him? Sure. What do you remember about him? I mean, to me, Drew Brees has always been Drew Brees. I mean, I played against Drew in college. So he tear you up? No, he never won against us. You watch that highlight. That's that's wonderful work by FS1, bro. I mean, look at that. Look at what I did to your boy. This is what they call a trip trifecta, right? That's a sack. That's a scoop. That's a score. That's a bad man right what there. What about the second, third, fourth quarters? We won. Drew Brees never beat me in college. But he was good, though. Remember how good he was? Tom Brady beat me every time in college. <laughs> <laughs> well, think, about the, think about the era of time that I played in in college. I, I went against Drew Brees. Look, that's me sacking him. I got him multiple times in this game. I blocked a field goal with my chest in this game, Colin. <laughs> I was literally Superman in college, and then I went pro. And then You were a good player in pros? I, my, well, they, they kept my cape in, in state college. Is that what it is? Yeah, I, it I, I remember you being pretty good in the, in the pros as well. I'm not bitter. <laughs> I smile about it. Let me ask you about this. There is, I always say when it comes to a coach, optics matter some. you got to yes. stand in front of guys like you. Mm -hmm. Alpha males, going to be millionaires. Adam Gase, to me, sometimes looks like a coordinator. Mm -hmm. Matt Patricia, hat on backwards. It feels like a defensive coach, not a head coach. Mm -hmm. Freddie Kitchens now. you got players barking at him. He's got the big hoodie. You know, he, didn't, you know, he was a quarterback in college. When I watch them unravel this weekend, is it possible guys just don't buy him? Yes, it is possible. You can buy being friends with somebody and not being, uh, not having them as an authoritative figure over you, right? Uh, you could go have a couple cold ones with with kitchens, and you guys laugh and have a good time and dap each other up and. Maybe even pass out together, right? Wake up, do it again. He's one. He seems. I don't know him, but he seems like he has a really cool personality. Somebody that a Mike McCarthy relatability. Uh, yeah, I like, and I think that's a great. I think that's a great comparison. And Mike McCarthy is definitely that type of guy. But I think the differentiator between those two is that I believe Mike McCarthy was m much more well prepared to be a head coach now this than is, what Kitchens. Is. Okay, th that's your point. 
they could have a lot of similarities. The difference is Mike was ready when given the opportunity. Yes. And Freddie could be as good, but he may not quite be ready. By the way, the GM also gave him OBJ. He gave him big personalities, yeah. which Green Bay historically doesn't go after big personalities. I don't – with as much personalities and as much talent as Cleveland has, you should still be able to win at a higher level than what they are, even not being maybe an amazing coach. Like, I think you have enough talent that if you just simplify things and go out there and, like you said, and you have the buy-in and the belief from the players, you should be able to have success. And to me, that, I think that that's what raises the biggest concern about Kitchens right now um, and, and his ability to lead this team and guide this team is – with all the talent that you have, you don't have to be an amazing coach. Don't try to don't try to make it about you. Manage those personalities and make it about them. OBJ, what do you want to do? How do you get the most yards in the game? How do you score the most points in the game? I'd go down the list. I go I go across the list, and then now I, I'm I'm giving myself a fair opportunity. And if that doesn't work. I don't think the other way obviously isn't working, whatever it is he's doing right now, but I would really, really try to figure out what that balance is with those personalities and try to deliver what it is that they're looking for because sometimes it's just as simple as saying, okay, this is the route I love to run. Let him run the route. Uh, I want to ask you, the league is obviously getting um, more mobile at quarterback. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you 10 guys that move pretty well. Okay. Wentz, Lamar, Kyler, Russell, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Russell Wilson. Did you say Russ already? So let me do it again. Ten is a long. That's a large okay, number. Let man. me give you. Let me get again. A moving guy. Mahomes right. moves. Yep. Lamar moves. Yep. Kyler moves. Yep. Josh Allen moves. Yes. Carson Wentz moves. Yes. Russell Wilson moves. Yes. Of the six movers. Okay. Next 10 years, who wins the most? <laughs> Next 10 years? Oh, Russell man. Wilson's not about to hang it up, so he doesn't get hit. Who wins the most over the next start from where we are right now? now who wins the most over the next 10 eight years? Eight to 10 years. Who you taking? Of all the new mobile dude tonight, Russell's not old by any stretch. I think Russell Wilson is the safest pick for me. That's what I think. That's what I think. But I could be horribly wrong in my estimation of Lamar Jackson. I really could. What did you think he was going to be? I thought he would I thought he would be good and I thought he would be I thought he would be better than what prognosticators put out on him. Okay. I I did not think that he would be as good as he is right now. And I think that that's the most intriguing aspect of all of those names are what are their capabilities? Because Kyler Murray, again, I was with Kyler Murray at the Under Armour All-American game, and I saw his work ethic, and I saw his maturity level back then as a senior in high school. I don't know what his ceiling is. I don't know what Lamar Jackson's ceiling is. I have had enough of a sample size of what Russell Wilson brings to the table to say confidently. Win the Super Bowl. Be the the guy. I'm okay. And a lot of people say, well, it was the Legion of Boom that led that team and this, that, and the other. And that's fine. But we're getting a very, very good, uh, good information grab of who Russell Wilson is as the undisputed leader and driver of, of a team this year. And and so he hasn't skipped a beat. Everything that's been asked of him um, in terms of his professional um, job description, he's filled the bill. Oh, he's he's exceeded everything. And so I can't, with him being in that list, and there are some fine names in that list, Mahomes is one of the most gifted throwers that, that I've seen that has the mobility. Um, Allen is pretty, pretty – doggone good over there and he may have a strong he he has an arm he's 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 really building his reputation um and obviously it goes without saying what Lamar Jackson is is doing for for the Ravens but if I'm looking at sample size and for the long run of what I believe would have the truest um sense of of success over that extended amount of time I think Russell Wilson fits that bill what'd you make of the Cowboys win anything 
they showed they showed what people felt the capabilities of this roster um, could could achieve. But I, I mean, Ed, that's it for me. Like I don't I don't think that that one win erases everything that we've been seeing, everything that we've been discussing. I don't think that one win erases that. They're going to have to erase that. Talented roster. What was the most talented single roster you played on? You played man, for the Redskins. One, you man. played for the Giants. Was there a year that you were like dudes everywhere? In the league? For you. I mean, that's my whole career. No, but the team you played on that was the most gifted, physically the most gifted. <sighs> there was a Redskin team that went out and got somebody. My freshman or my rookie year was when they brought in Bruce Smith and, and Deion Sanders. And, and But they were old. They were old. Daryl Green was on that team. Champ Bailey was on that team. That's a lot of dudes. It's a lot of dudes. How did you do that year? Uh, we didn't make the playoffs. There you go. <laughs> it's not always about talent. You know what, though? If we would have had a kicker, I think we ended up with Murray. What, what's Murray's first name, man? Golly, man. Murray, Murray, Yeah, nobody Murray, can Murray. remember it for He reason. was literally like 90 years old, man. He was like a puff of smoke if you would have touched him the right way, man. Out of there, gone. Like, rest in peace, so, Murray. But that most talented team didn't make the playoffs. We did not make the playoffs. We were losing games by like one point, two points, three points. Like, literally, the combined losing average that we had that year, it was li- if we had a field goal kicker, we would have been probably been all right. What'd you and say, it might have changed the trajectory of my career. Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray. So How he, old is he right now? Like 90. 63? Oh, close enough. He, right now he's 63? Wow. <laughs> I thought you were embellishing. I thought, I thought he was 63 back then. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar Arrington, high school football coach. What's the name of the school in Pasadena? Maranatha High. How'd and you, they say you can't get into the school unless you can spell it. Maranatha High. How'd you do this year? <laughs> we were 7-4, uh, and four, actually. Seven. Would you ever coach college football? I don't know. If I went with Urban, I would go. You would? If James Franklin called me, I'd go. And be and you'd be a linebacker coach. If Brent Pry called me, I'd go. All right. There's a few names that if they called, I'd think about going. All right. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, back at you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.